Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for April 1st, 2019. Listen, I've been teaching a series entitled Press Through It under the overall banner for the year, Heaven on Earth. But I'm going to take a pause from that series over the, for the next couple of weeks because today is April 1st and we are just a few weeks away from Easter Sunday morning or Resurrection Sunday morning. And the resurrection of Jesus is what separates Christianity from every other world religion. If Jesus was not raised from the dead, then our preaching is in vain. Everything, our, our faith is in vain. The resurrection of Jesus is the singular most important event in history. And so we're just a few weeks away from celebrating the fact that Jesus went to the cross for us. He died, but he didn't stay dead early on Sunday morning. God raised him from the dead with all power in his hand. So for the next couple of weeks, I'm only, I only have two weeks of messages because on that third week, the week before Easter, I'm going to be on spring break with my, with my family. I'm not going to share any messages that week. I'm going to spend some time with my kids. So I have two weeks of messages. Uh, I'm going to share these two weeks of messages with you to prepare you for the road to the resurrection. And I pray that these messages will be a blessing to you. The first one for today is, is called entitled the blood of Jesus. I love talking about the blood of Jesus is actually something that a lot of people don't talk about today. It's like, like they've taken the blood out, out of the gospel. They, they've taken the blood and the sacrifice out of the messages. People just show up in church because they want something from God. And, and we haven't, you know, it's like people forget to, uh, to even preachers, pastors are forgetting to remind people about the blood of Jesus and the sacrifice that will be required of us. God requires no less than all of us in order to be the men, the women that God has called us to be. So as we take this journey on the road to the resurrection, as we take this journey to talk about the blood of Jesus, I want us to take a look at Ephesians chapter one, verses five through seven. I'm going to read it to you from the Passion Bible translation. This is what the Bible said. This is what the apostle Paul said about the redeeming power of the blood of Jesus. He said this, for it was always his, God's perfect plan to adopt us, you and I, as his delightful children through our union with Jesus, the anointed one, so that his tremendous love that cascades over the whole world would be glorified by his grace for the same love he has for the beloved one, Jesus, he has for us. So the father loves us, you and I, with the same love that he loved Jesus with. Paul goes on to say, and this unfolding plan brings him great pleasure. Since we are now joined with Christ, we have been given the treasures of redemption by his blood, the total cancellation of our sins, all because of the cascading riches of God's grace. So we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Our sins have been canceled. This wasn't done because of anything that we did to earn it or to deserve it. It was done by the cascading riches of God's grace that was poured out upon us because of Jesus, because of what he did for us. So this message today, I'm going to talk about the blood of Jesus and the substitutionary work that was, that was worked on the cross for us. So Jesus was our substitution, right? So he stood in the gap for us. He went to the cross. He took on something that we deserved, right? For something that he did not deserve. And so that's what I'll talk about today. Now, to set, to set the stage or the setting, I'm trying to cover like a lot of stuff, right? In one message. So I'm just kind of laying the foundation for the series. But I don't know if you know this, but if you read the Bible, you realize that we were all born in sin right? We were all born as captives. We were all born as slaves to the power of sin and the fear of death. And we were born this way because of Adam. So when Adam ate, when Adam transgressed against God, two things were introduced into the world that, that had not been here before. I call them Satan's dynamic duo. They were sin and death, right? So sin and death were introduced into the world because of Adam. Now we were born in sin, and we were born under the bondage of the fear of death, and we could not get ourselves out of the situation. It was like we were being held captive, like someone who's being held captive, and, and they're waiting for someone to come rams pay the ransom for them, right, to get them out. And so, so we had this debt, or we had this ransom that was looming over our heads, and we needed someone to come pay the ransom. The problem was that that the ransom could not be paid with money. The ransom could only be paid with blood. That the only suitable payment 
for our life was going to be another life. So someone had to trade their life for our life so that we could get out of the clutches of sin and get free from the bondage of death. And so the text says that that Jesus redeemed us with his own blood, redemption through the blood of Jesus. Webster defines redemption as the repurchase of captured goods or prisoners. When, like when you go redeem, you're paying for someone, right? You're paying for something or you're paying for someone. The, so the repurchase of captured goods, the repurchase of prisoners, the act of procuring deliverance, the, the Bible says, I mean, uh, the, 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 the dictionary says, the act of procuring the deliverance of persons or things from the possession and power of captors, watch this, by the payment of, of an equivalent ransom. So the Webster Dictionary says that the only way to redeem something is by paying an equivalent ransom. Acts 20 and 28 says that Jesus redeemed us or purchased us with his own blood. Now, this is the only equivalent ransom. If you look at the Old Testament, they killed animals. They killed Turtle, uh, turtle doves and, and goats and bullocks, right? And, and But those were a covering for sin. Those could never redeem us from sin because they were not an equivalent ransom. An animal is not an equivalent ransom for man. So the only way that man could be delivered from sin and delivered from death is that another man, another human would have to die. Not just any human, but a perfect human. So he could be the perfect sacrifice. Jesus came to be that sacrifice for us. Jesus came to get us out of everything Adam got us into, and he did it by purchasing us, by paying for us. He redeemed us with his own blood, with his perfect blood, with his untainted blood. Jesus paid the ultimate price so that you and I could live the ultimate life, and that's what Easter Sunday is all about. So what does this mean to you today? I have five things that I want to share with you quickly as we're setting the tone, setting the stage for this series, thinking about the resurrection, thinking about Easter Sunday morning. Five things. Here we go. Number one, because of Adam, sin and death were introduced into the world and all humans are born in sin and subject to the fear of death because of one man. But the good news is that another man came and his name is Jesus. And Jesus got us out of everything that Adam got us into. Jesus redeemed us by making a payment and he paid for us with his own blood. Number two, in the Old Testament, innocent animals died for sinful man and they died every year. So on the day of atonement, they killed all these animals for us. But the, the blood of animals was not an equivalent ransom. The blood of animals was a temporary solution for a permanent problem. So Jesus had to come to be the permanent solution to get us out of this thing. That's Hebrews 9 and 12. Number three, God sent his own son. God sent his own son. The Bible calls him the last Adam to die in our place. Jesus was the last Adam. Jesus died in our place. Jesus paid an equivalent ransom. Jesus delivered us from the power of sin and the sting of death and the bondage of Satan. Jesus did it. He did it once and for all. He did it for me. He did it for you. Number four, the ransom has been paid. The captor has been defeated and the captors, which is you and I, we have been released. And so now you got to embrace this reality. Wouldn't it be crazy for you to go pay a ransom for someone and for that person to come out from that bondage and is now free and you already paid it? Wouldn't it be crazy for that person to then turn around and go right back to the cap door and say, I want to be a captive again. You can lock me up again. That, that's ridiculous. That, that makes no sense. Well, that's exactly what we do if we willingly go back to sin, if we willingly go back to Satan. Once you're born again, you are free. The, 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 the ransom has been paid. You are now, you have been delivered from sin and death. Why would you willingly go back to sin? Why would you willingly go back to Satan? Don't go back. You, you have been delivered from sin. You have been delivered from the power of death. You have been delivered from the bondage of Satan. So do not willingly go back to sin or Satan. I know that this, this is not the type of message that a lot of us want to hear today, right? People want me to tell you that you could make it, that you could do it. People want me to encourage you and people don't like to hear about sin. People don't like to hear about Satan, but listen, they need to. This is the gospel. Jesus died for us. Jesus paid the, uh, uh, 
a price for us. He paid with his own blood and we still have to preach Jesus everywhere. Number five. And finally, let me tell you that Easter Sunday is not about bunny rabbits. <laughs> that Easter Sunday is not about colorful eggs. That Easter Sunday is not about nice suits. Easter Sunday is about blood. It's about a cross and it's about an empty tomb. And so, yes, just a few weeks from now, we will be celebrating Easter Sunday morning. And we got to preach the fact that Jesus suffered. He bled. He died. And then he rose from the dead with all power in his hand. We serve a living savior. Jesus is his name. So as you enter into this day, please embrace the resurrection power of Jesus. Think about this resurrection power as you enter every meeting. Think about this resurrection power as you engage in every conversation. Think about this resurrection power as you conduct all your activity this day and this week. Think about the fact that you have been redeemed. Jesus bought you with a price and that price was high. It was the blood, his own blood. He died so that you could live. So we are now supposed to live our lives in honor of his death. I'm talking about the blood of Jesus. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to repeat after me now in faith from a believing heart. Lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, thank you for loving me enough to send your own son to die in my place. The blood of goats and bullocks and turtle doves could never serve as an equivalent payment for the sin of man. Adam got us into a mess, but Jesus came to get me out of everything Adam got me into. Jesus paid a price I could not pay for a debt he did not owe. Jesus willingly took all my sin and offered me his righteousness so that I can take on his righteousness and lay down my sin. I am covered by the blood of Jesus. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. I am called according to your purpose. I am free by your grace. I enter this day as a cleansed, delivered, purified, and set apart warrior in your kingdom. I do not entangle myself with sin or Satan. Because I have been redeemed. I have been bought with a price. And I live my life in honor of Jesus' death. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. There's a subscribe button. Subscribe, get the messages. You'll get all my notes in your inbox, in your email for free. Sign up, get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. Get excited about the next two weeks as, as I'll be teaching about this. I want you to really think about Easter Sunday morning. I want you to think about the resurrection of Jesus. I want you to think about the power of the cross. I want you to think about uh, uh, everything that Jesus did for you. And now we're supposed to live our lives in honor of his death and his sacrifice. I love you and God loves you. Listen, do me a favor before you leave the screen right now. Hit the share button. Share this on your social media, on your timeline, with your friends. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Go to youtube.com forward slash Rick Pina to see the YouTube channel. Let's let everyone everywhere know what Jesus did for them so that they could be free from sin and walk out from the bondage of death. The fear of death has, has been crippling people, and, and there's really no reason to. Once you're born again, you've done all the dying you're going to do. You have no fear of death and you have you're no longer under the bondage of sin so walk in the freedom wherewith Christ Jesus has made you free i love you and god loves you god bless you